everyone, it's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com. Welcome back. I am here with my next installment of a finished jewelry update for the month of April 2021. So this is where I show you all what I've been up to for the past month since the last update video, show you some of the things I've made from various boxes and subscriptions and from other supplies in my stash. So today I'm gonna have some pieces from the recent April 2021 bargain bead box, some items to share from recent tutorials, and then a few new items from the Emerging Spring Collection that was curated by Stephanie of Bronze Pony, Beaded Jewelry, and Eureka Crystal Beads. So I'm gonna show you some of these pieces, go into details about my design process, and just a heads up, some of these items are for sale in my shop on my website, orchidandopal.com. So you can check that out if you're interested in any of these pieces and other pieces I've shared in the past. And if there's something you don't see, always feel free to ask. Before I get into the pieces today, I want to briefly mention that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. In case you haven't heard of them, Skillshare is an online learning community that offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people with hands-on projects and feedback. Topics available include things like small business, design, marketing, productivity, arts and crafts, and so much more. This month, I discovered a three-part series called Top Tips for Selling at Arts and Craft Shows by Stein Wyman. With venues gradually reopening around the country, I think it's a great time for crafters to think about potential strategies for in-person sales again at craft shows and the like. Of course, this is just one example of the many relevant topics that you can find practical and helpful information about. Normally, Skillshare costs a little less than $10 a month, but because they're sponsoring today's video, the first thousand people to click the link in the description section below the video will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So go ahead and try them out with no obligation, and if you wish to do so, you're free to opt out of their service before your trial ends. All right, so this set that you're looking at that you took a peek at before is the first set I made from the contents of the Bargain Bead Box. If you're not familiar with that box, I do have an unboxing video, and I will also leave a link to it down below as well as the coupon code to go along with it. It's an awesome subscription. And this month, we received a lot of antique brass findings and different shades and types of purple beads, including gemstones. We have some of these royal purple just gorgeous man-made pearls that I incorporated in this three-strand necklace, as well as in the coordinating earrings. And you can see that I used these interesting connectors to not only use in the earrings, but also use to create the three strands in the necklace and to separate those. They also sent the post earring finding. So as you can see, I've used the posts right there. And again, the shell pearls, they also included some little faceted amethyst rounds on some of those antique brass spacer beads. So pretty much all of the same types of items that I used in the coordinating necklace that you see here, as well as this gorgeous focal pendant that's kind of hanging down underneath these two beaded strands. So here's the set off of the display. You can see that I used the chain that also came in the box and used some for an extender to make this a little bit more adjustable. And pretty much everything to make this necklace came in the subscription box. That is minus a few of the findings like the wire guards and I think the lobster clasp, but most everything else did come even the little ball head pins that came with our other various findings and they even included some jump rings. So that is set number one. And here's a look at set number two using the butterfly. So I did pull this really big antique brass focal butterfly from my stash. I feel like I've had it forever. I believe it came from bbcraft.com. But because the antique brass was the color of the findings we were using this month with the purples, I was so excited to pull that out to work with the purple butterflies and was glad I flipped through my findings binder to see that because I would have forgotten about it. But, you know, I figured it went perfectly with the butterfly theme. And these butterflies can be a little bit of a challenge to work with unless you're just planning to string them. I was trying to come up with something a little different. So this focal had different points where I could connect different things. I decided to do some strands of different chain and different lengths. And this is not supposed to be matchy-matchy. This was supposed to be a little bit more organic, kind of like butterflies just randomly landing on a plant, not everything being in the same exact sequence, but yet balanced out a little bit. So 
That's my idea behind this piece. I used different types of chain too, all in the antique brass, but I think I have like three different types in here. Added these extra little details where the chain is kind of hanging down a little bit because that just kind of reminded me of the antique feel, vintage feel of this color palette and of the theme. So overall, just a really fun kind of boho, vintage, drapey, fringy butterfly necklace. Even some of these little feather type charms down here that I pulled from my stash. But overall, most of the chain is from the box as well as the little ball head pins and the butterflies, of course. Now for the earrings, I decided to use, of course, the coordinating butterflies. I had two left and I found these two findings in my stash that I've had for quite some time. They came from a dollar bead box and I just used these dangling down from the butterflies. Use some of these little rondelle beads that they had sent in the box and some of those post earring findings. In between the butterflies, you can also see that I used some of the little amethyst rounds and some of the rondelles that you also saw with the butterflies in the earrings, kind of bringing in some different tones of purple and some different shapes dangling down. So here's a look at the necklace off of the display. I had one little butterfly left that I used on the extender chain and make this adjustable and also give that a little bit of a decoration on the back. And this was actually one of the very last pieces that I made. I talked a little bit about my design process when I did the video last month about how I come up with designs from the bargain bead box specifically. And I talked about how sometimes things don't always hit you at first. And this was one of those things that didn't hit me until several weeks later. And honestly, I hadn't even thought about the fact that I had this focal, but all in all, I'm really happy with how this came out. I think it's a really unique and artful piece. And then next I have this two strand necklace. This is where I use some of those freshwater pearls. And I also pulled some of these little tiny like magenta colored two millimeter beads from my stash that happened to go with that gemstone donut round. So that pendant is actually one of those gemstone donuts with the big hole in the center. And I actually decided to just experiment a little bit with this. I glued on one of those interesting metallic findings that they sent with the little tiny holes onto one side. And then on the other side, kind of to make a bail, I had attached this piece, which was one of our other findings. You saw that in the three strand necklace with the little swirls. I thought that kind of looked cool as a focal piece and also allowed an opportunity to add the chain to that. It's also reversible. You could use it on this side or you could have it flipped around and use that side as the pendant. So I just thought it was a different way to use one of those donut gemstone pendants without doing wire wrapping or without doing a beaded bail this time. For the chain portion, you can see that I broke up a lot of the chain that they sent in the box and cut that into little segments and then attach these wire wrapped links with those pearls and the little magenta beads. I wanted to bring that color up the chain, not just doing the pearls, and I like the way that that turned out. And so overall in this necklace, we have a shorter strand that hits more closer to the neck, I would say, and then a longer strand that sits a little bit below. And overall it looks really pretty and elegant on, I think. And that pearl and antique brass combination also gives us that more vintage feel. Finally, there's a look the back. I used a lobster clasp from my stash, used some extender, which was cut from the chain, and then added a little freshwater pearl dangling off the back. And here is necklace number four. I haven't made earrings to go with this one yet, but I hope to. And so this one, I used a lot of different things from the box. I'll show you more in depth this particular metal component that I kind of rigged together into something different than it had originally came as. I did the fringe dangles off the bottom of the semicircular type of component that had all those little loops. Used some of these bronzy toned seed beads from my stash. And then these are the rondelles that they had sent. And I used them in a graduated kind of way where I went from darker to lighter. And then I pulled some of these feather charms in my stash. I thought they added a nice extra layered look to this bold fringe statement. You can see here are those lavender gemstone beads that they sent, a couple of those larger faceted crystals, and then two of these antique brass components. 
that I wire wrapped with loops on either side so I can use them as connectors. So here's the deal with this focal. Number one, I used some of this lavender Nymo beading thread to do my fringe, and I really wasn't trying to hide it at all. I kind of wanted to use it to show off the color because why not? And so this focal was actually two different round pieces, if you recall. And then there was this rounded semicircular piece that we also had gotten the chandelier component with all the different loops on it. So I actually sandwiched this together in between the two round components and made this into one component with all these little loops. The way I did it was first, I actually used resin, some UV resin, which is pretty cool. And I used a UV light to harden that looped piece onto the back of one of these circles. And then I used some like E6000 jewelry glue to glue on the other circle over top. So that is how this came together. And it honestly looks like it belongs together to me. And then I just attached a jump ring right there at the top and went on my way. So that was something different that I did with some of those focals that were sent this month. And I thought that was kind of something different and interesting to share. I made this necklace a little bit longer, so I used a longer length of chain with an extender, and that way this very drapey focal could sit a little bit lower on the neck. So if you're thinking that this necklace actually looks similar to something I did a few months ago, it really is. I did a tutorial on a similar style where I did a chandelier or fringe style necklace. So if you've never done one before, maybe check back on that tutorial and I'll show you how I put this whole thing or type of thing together with the fringe and one of these chandelier components and a little bit of bead stringing wire and attaching that to chain. Something else I made this month that I'll just share briefly, this is from the Annie's Beads Kit of the Month set, and this is a set that I shared a few weeks ago. It came in the Annie's Kit that I had received and you can use the coupon code SHARE50 on this particular type of kit. You may not get this particular set, but it's a great DIY beading kit that comes once a month with that generous coupon code for the first box, especially if you are brand new. It really walks you through step by step. And I've been enjoying the very wearable pieces that they have been sending in the kits. They go together really quickly and they're pieces I could definitely see myself wearing and also taking those techniques and putting them towards other designs. So I'll try to link that Annie's video in the corner and also link it down below with that coupon code SHARE50 if you wanted to try that out. And also I have a couple of other past videos sharing the other sets I'd gotten from that subscription. Up next, I have a few pieces to share from recent tutorials. So this is the Chameleon Beaded Bead that I made the largest one that uses the Moby Duos, Iris Duos, two whole lentil beads, and some seed beads. And I've also used the two and a half inch silk tassels specifically that were from the Potomac Beads Best Bead Boxes. They fit really well inside of the bottom of those beaded beads if you do the large one. And then this is actually one of those vintage beads from the recent Hay Beads Vintage Bead Box. You may recognize that one. The colors just went perfectly with this particular beaded bead. So I decided to use that on top of this one to create and finish off this particular necklace. And I just love that gold colored tassel with all of those different colors together. And then I had this other teal tassel. So I was searching my stash for different things I could put with this and also do a completely different colorway than this one. And also the blue and gold one that I had shared last month. So I went with this silver and this kind of aqua and purple combination. I used this irregularly shaped amethyst bead at the top and created this particular one. So if you haven't seen that tutorial, it is available already on my channel. You can go ahead and make yourself a large chameleon beaded bead. And I also just posted the video for the smallest version. So here are two of the really tiny chameleon beaded beads, the smallest version that I made, and these do not include the two whole lentil beads. They only include the Moby duos and the Iris duos, and I just think they're so cute. I love how they came together. They're so rounded in shape and hold their shape really well. They're a really good sturdy bead, 
and perfect for stringing directly on some dainty chain or some small cord. I did share a necklace last month where I used multiples of these and made a graduated size beaded bead necklace. And I also have this example here of another way that you could put those beaded beads together in a piece. As you can see, this particular necklace uses two of the smallest shapes here on either side. And then this one here in the center, it looks really similar because it is but I decided to use one more Iris Duo, so it was six instead of five. Made this one just slightly larger than the other two, but you can see I just slipped them right onto chain and used some of these larger whole gold beads to space them out. So thank you again to viewer Michelle who had requested some beaded beads. I hope to do more in the future and even some with some less unusually or less adventurously shaped multi-hole beads, maybe some with single holes, but I hope you enjoy this one and this tutorial is also available so you can check that out if you're interested. Next, by another viewer's request, I'm just loving all your requests by the way, and if I can't get to a request that you've made, it's nothing personal. I get a lot of requests and sometimes things just take a little more time than others, but I really do keep track. I make a list of what's requested and I do try my best to come out with different things as I'm able to, but I had a request to come out with a V-shaped half teal herringbone necklace or one that comes down into a point, and so I came up with this particular design, which also has a tutorial available if you want to check it out. Of course, you can make these stripes different widths. You don't have to do the same width stripes. You can do just say one row of each if you wanted to, or make this all one color. You could even do these in vertical rows instead of horizontal. But in the video, I show you specifically how to do this particular type and most importantly, how to bring that together in the center and how to finish off the back using a two loop bar clasp and some of your 15-0 seed beads. So in addition to that one, I'd also made two of these. One was a prototype, one I did actually in the video, so I do have two available for sale, but I made this combination that I'd also done the Aftila Herringbone bracelet that I really liked with the black, gray, and white that kind of goes from dark to light or light to dark, however you wanna look at that. And then there's a full look at that one. So I just love how drapey these are. They're lightweight, just like the half teal herringbone bracelets. And they really fit nicely and elegantly around the neck. I could just even see one of these done in solid bronze or silver or gold. It'd be so elegant. And now I want to wrap up by showing you the three new creations I made from the Emerging Spring Collection from Eureka Crystal Beads curated by Stephanie of Bronze Pony Beaded Jewelry. I do believe that is out of stock at the moment, but I am really hoping that that collection comes back in stock. Of course, you may be able to pick up some of the items separately still if you wanted to instead of picking up the entire collection. But let me get into the first pendant that I made. So here it is. This is the first pendant and I wanted to show it to you like this so you could see the light passing through. This is one of those cushion cut Swarovski crystals that doesn't have any back enameling on it. So the light passes right directly through it and it's so sparkly and transparent. And what I did was I created a beaded bezel made out of super duos. Also used the 15 O's and 11 O's included in that collection, as well as some four millimeter Preciosa bicones and some three millimeter smaller Preciosa bicones there in the center. And here is a look at the back. So it's kind of surprising when you turn it around, you see all that green on the back and then most of the blue on the front. So if you saw that video, if you're familiar with that collection, you know that there was a lot of blues and greens and golds in that theme and so this kind of I think pulled this all together so hoping to have tutorials on these pieces if there is enough interest I can't wait to play around with this design even more and see it in different colors but I just used what was available and what came in that collection and I'm really happy with how this came together around the cushion cut and using the super duos. This next piece was kind of inspired by both a viewer and also the collection, of course. But I had somebody ask me if I could please do a tutorial on the flat chenille beading stitch. So, of course, I've been playing around some more with that. 
I do plan to do some more bead weaving basics videos, including the flat chenille stitch, which is what you see here, tubular herringbone, and lots and lots more over time. So with this one, of course, there were a lot of those little three by two millimeter rondelles in the Emerging Spring collection in all different colors of blues and greens, and then the tan color that you see. And so I did a random kind of alternating stripe pattern on this particular bracelet using the flat chenille stitch. And then in between the rondelles, I used the clear Delica beads that came in the collection. I like the little bit of sparkle when the light hits these beads, especially the little sparkly rondelles and then the little silver lining in those clear Delica beads. As you can see, I finished this off with a lobster clasp and some slide bar clasp that I had in my stash and a little piece of chain. And then the final design I have in two different colors. These are straight from the collection. Once again, using Super Duos and those little eight millimeter opalescent chiton stones, the 15 millimeter sea beads, the four millimeter rounds, and some of the bicones around that center one. And this is what I came up with, this spring blossoms, I think is what I'll call it, necklace design, hoping to do a tutorial on that one. This is in the blue variety, and I'll show you a little look at the back. There you can see more of how this came together, and the top has some more embellishing on it with those 15-0 seed beads, outlining those beads and making these look a little bit more blossom-like and then attaching the chain to two wire guards on either side of these smaller units. And then I also made one in this golden colorway, and again, used the little chiton stones. Now, they did include four in the actual collection. I happen to have two more in my stash from a previous purchase, so I was able to make another one of these prototypes. This one did not use bicones around the edge. This one used round, so I was trying that out. Also included are some of the little rondelles, super duos, and this is just done in another colorway. These two small ones are just slightly different, so I may fix that, although it doesn't bother me. And you know what? Blossoms are all different anyway. This one, you can see a little bit more of the super duos peeking through than you can on that one. And then once again, here's a look at the back so you can kind of see more of what was used in this design and how it came together. So that is everything I've been up to for another busy month of April. And I want to let you know I appreciate each and every single one of you for being here. Just across the 40,000 subscriber threshold and that just blows my mind. So a huge thank you to all of you for subscribing and for so many who have been with me since the beginning. You don't know how much that means to me. And even if you haven't, I'm just glad you're here. So thank you for coming along this beading journey with me and sharing this fun craft. I love showing you guys what I've been up to, but I love seeing what you've been up to as well so feel free to share with me in the comments down below and share with everybody what you've been up to maybe something here inspired you today or will lead you in a totally different direction so hopefully that's the case in addition to being enjoyable to see what I've made with lots of the different boxes and things that I share here on a monthly basis so if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give it a big thumbs up. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, you can do so down below. I'd love to have you back. Another huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Once again, you can check out that link down below to sign up for a free trial and check them out. I will be back again real soon. And until next time, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. And as always, happy beating. Happy beating.